You need to be aware of the potential of distraction in your life if you want to cut off distractions. Number one, distraction brings delay to your life and to your destiny. A natural example is you may delay past schedule time on something you wanted to go for. And if you want to check back, you might not find the exact thing that kept you. And the answer is you were distracted. You sitting down to read as a student or you just want to read. The noises that you hear might be a distraction. And sometimes it might not be from the external, it could come from within. In fact, as I was trying to prepare this video, I was so distracted that I had to delay the time. I had to delay because my head was clocked up. I could not sit down to write out this study. So distraction does bring delay. And in life generally, most of the things, the goals that you set for your life, the visions and the dreams that you have, maybe you have told yourself in the next five years, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. But because of distractions here and there, things happening, you can't even set up finances to achieve that goal. And when that time comes, you are delayed. This is why you need to cut off distractions. Number two, distraction brings despair. Some of the time, due to distraction, you may just feel confused and you don't even know what is happening. You can't even wrap your head around why you can't do anything, why you can't think because you are stuck upstairs. And that's the point that you feel this nervousness and you feel dejected. It could be about life or anything or at work. Being distracted could bring you to a place of despair, which is, you experience trouble and chaos and then dejection. You lose confidence even in yourself of being able to finish something that you want to do. You have a project to carry out and due to distraction which has brought you to a place of despair, you delay that project. You were supposed to do it for one hour, but you delay it to do it for two hours or even more. And in life generally, distraction can bring you to a place of confusion that you cannot focus on your purpose. And this is why you need to cut off distractions. Number three, distractions can bring destruction to your destiny and your life. Truth is for the devil to be able to steal, to kill and to destroy you, first of all, he needs to distract you. All the devil tries to do around your life is trying to distract you with the troubles, with the worries, with the fears and anger and all these things that you experience. And because distraction brings destruction, you need to be aware and cut off distractions. God is not an author of confusion, so he cannot cause you distraction. Distraction can only come from the enemy. God wants you to have an aim. That's why the Bible says in Habakkuk that you should write the vision down and make it plain. But if you're distracted, you want to think about other things instead of writing the vision down. And in deliberating around these thoughts about distraction, you should understand that distraction is not only labeled bad things. It could also be in good things which you love and you put your heart into it. Samson loved Delilah, but he did not know that Delilah had the potential to destroy his life. So most times distraction can come in the thing that you love so much. And that is why distraction comes through temptation most of the time. And most times we fall into temptations and go into things not knowing that we have so much to lose. But because we are so distracted in life that we are despaired, we are confused, we are in chaos, we don't even know the purpose that God has for us. We don't even know the deposit that he has put inside of us. We sell ourselves cheap and get distracted and miss our purpose. And God says, cut off the distractions. And the thing about temptation is that it does not come to you unless you have a desire for something. Scripture says, temptation comes from our own desires, which entice us and drag us away. Temptation cannot come to you on a thing you don't have a desire for. So which means in Joseph's case, he had a desire for sexual intimacy, which most people have. So because that desire was there did not mean he was committing sin. It meant it was natural for him. But then temptation came through that desire and it was his own decision to decide if he's going to fall for this temptation or not. So because you're tempted does not mean you've already fallen. If you are being tempted, you want to live a life of purity before God, the distraction will come that you are being tempted and you feel like it's congee, I cannot hold myself. No. God has given you the Holy Spirit. One of the fruits of the Spirit is self-control. Yes, you can hold yourself. And in Jesus' temptation, the devil tried to draw his attention away from God by telling him, if you are the son of God, like trying to make him prove himself. Look, sometimes in life, you don't need to prove yourself to anybody. Your life is your life. You don't need to compare your life with anybody because that's a distraction. And there's a temptation to want to compare yourself with others because sometimes they might say things that wants to make you compare yourself. So there's no need to compare and contrast. You just need to focus on your life. Jesus knew what he came to do. It's written in Hebrews about him that he was tempted in all way, but without sin. So if temptation comes to you to drag your attention away from the focus, 
you have about your goal in life about your goal in your career whatsoever thing you have in your life the bible says call of distraction therefore since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith let us strip off every weight that slows us down especially the sin that so easily trips us up and let us run with endurance the race god has set before us from this scripture you see life as a race which is anybody that wants to run a race is so careful of is or I intake what they eat and they are careful of what they wear. So the first thing in order to cut off distractions is lay aside every weight. Sometimes your lifestyle could be a distraction and you may not know. Could it be that you have health issues and you are advised not to take sugar? You know if you take sugar against the advice of your medical professionals, you are trying to destroy your own life, your own destiny. It could be about your lifestyle in terms of your spending. Are you spending wisely? Are you looking for excessive comfort when you don't have the capability to cater for it? If you are doing that, that's a weight. You need to lay it aside. That's a distraction to you. And distraction is also in the form of worry, fear, anger. Because if you are offended at everything that everyone does to you, that's a distraction to your life. You're not going to move forward like that. Worry will keep you in a place of solicitude whereby you have excessive concern and the truth is this excessive concern will choke you you don't have to allow the excessive concern to stalk your mind so instead of picking up worry and anxiety budget your life so that you can attain your goals anything that wants to drag you away from focusing on your future and planning your life well you need to lay it aside business is also a form of distraction social media is a form of distraction it is a good thing i cannot say it's not because it's helping a lot of people most people use it for their business but the majority of other people are being distracted through these means called social media yeah they are just online not as if they really have things that they are doing but it's a form of distraction for them they are even helping themselves distract themselves because somehow it's helping so that you will not get depressed but also it's contributing to you having the depressing thoughts if you are focused on checking people's lifestyle which is a highlight reel they are just showing you the good part if you're focused on that you're going to miss it you always be looking for a means of amusement which you might call it cruise but the truth is sometimes you don't need to be amused sometimes when you have feelings you need to put your feelings in a gauge and weigh them why am i feeling this way when my nights were filled with joyful songs I search my soul and ponder the difference now. He's trying to say some time in his past, he used to have these joyful worship songs in the night to sing. So what is the difference now? He was not looking for some way to distract himself. Instead, he searched his soul. When you allow yourself to process your thoughts and do a soul searching, you find purpose for your life. You realize why am I in this place? What is the difference now? There have been times that I've been happy. What is the difference now? There have been times that I've been joyful. What is happening now? Let me put my feelings in a gauge and measure them. What is the difference? What is happening to me? Why am I feeling the way I'm feeling? You don't need to run away from your feelings or your emotions. You need to process them. It will help you go a long way in life. It will help you know how to deal with people to help you know how to move forward, build relationships, etc. Number two, ask God to remove the distractions from your life. And before you pray this prayer to God for him to remove the distractions from your life, you should prepare your mind to be able and be ready to release them when he removes them. Because God will not release those distractions by himself for you. It could be in forms of friendships that come around you and then God reveals to you that this friendship is marring you is marrying your life and your future it's a distraction to you what are you supposed to do it's to remove them remember in the case of jonah in the boat it was because of jonah that those guys in that boat lost all their properties they did not know jonah was a problem and when they got to realize it was a problem they threw him out of the boat it was not a pleasant thing for them so sometimes some relationships you might need to cut it off if it is distracting your life if it is drawing you away from your attention. If you were to be in a relationship and then you want to honor God in it and you realize the other person does not have the same mindset with you, please cut off that distraction. It's going to mar your future and your life with God and the plans that he has for you. If you pray to God, the prayer is not a magic wand that God will remove them by himself. God will reveal to you and make you see signs, red flags, that this friendship or relationship is not good for you now it's your decision now that you've spot the problem it's your choice to decide do not be so deceived and misled evil companionships communion associations corrupt and deprave good manners and morals and character wherever you hang around you start smelling like that thing 
over time. And that is why it's advisable that you hang around people that are godly. Build a godly circle, a circle of faith, whereby as a child of God, your life can start shaping to become more like these people of faith. Not people that their languages are foul. You can't stay with these people with all your time. This is not trying to say that you should be religious and shun people and give people that mean face. No, you're not to become mean, but you are to be careful and cut off every distraction to the life of faith that God has for you. What is this life of faith? So that you will fulfill your divine destiny on earth and your destiny will not be delayed, neither will you be despaired in life. Number three, fix your focus on Jesus. This is the only true way to really escape the distractions in life. It's when your focus is on Jesus in all your life, whether it's about your character, your attitude, when it's about the dreams that you have towards your life, Jesus alone can help you and make those dreams come true for you. When you align with him, you receive the dreams he has for you, which is the best for you. Which is why the scripture says, delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Which means by the time you align with Jesus, by the time you fix your focus on him, you now receive his desires as a download. And that download is the best for you. And once you receive this download of the desires of Christ, it to affect your life, your choice of relationship, your choice of friends, and your attitude and character will be transformed through the power of the Spirit of God. The Bible says, looking away from all that will distract to Jesus, who is the leader and the source of our faith, giving the first incentive for our belief, and is also its finisher, bringing it to its maturity and perfection. He, for the joy of obtaining the price that was set for him, endured the cross, despising and ignoring the shame, and is now seated at the right hand of the throne of God. Jesus himself is the author and finisher of our faith. So if we ever want to have our attention fixed, we need to fix our attention firstly in him. By the time our eyes is looking up to him, every other thing in this world will align. So thank you so much for watching this video. We believe that this video will be of value to you and it will give you a clue to be able to cut off the distractions. Give this video a thumbs up if it has been a blessing. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I am Uwe Mepan. This is my YouTube channel. Thank you and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye-bye.